questions for Coach? Yes. Coach, I guess evaluating the film from the best past year, what are some of the things that you that stood off off the tape, you know, whether it be positive or negative? Yeah, you know, um, I thought the two guys that were here, uh, Theo, uh, you know, let us in blocks, 11 and 5, maybe in 15, 17 minutes. Miles has kind of developed to probably our, and our best defender. And, uh, you know, kind of with steals and his energy level, and that's why he started. So those two guys, there was some positive things for sure from there. You know, if you just look at the general numbers, the number looked right kind of for a game like that. We held him to about 30%, shot 50, uh, rebounded by 20, 26 to 12, assist to turnovers, points in the paint, 60 to 34. So you look at the numbers, and, and they were fine. You know, I thought uh, things we got to really improve on. Too many, we allowed way too many paint touches, especially in the first half. Uh, we didn't rim protect in the first half. And so uh, that was something that has been an emphasis in the film and practice. And, um, you know, the, the positive thing, you know, guys got to play our freshmen. Mari Abrams, TJ, Malik, even Robert all played well, you know, and got some minutes. Uh, I didn't play some of the older guys, Ty Fagan and Robert Allen, as much. I thought the other guys probably needed to play more. Uh, so there was, in those kind of games, lots of things that we can get better at. Um, I also said that since he's gotten here, he's kind of learned to focus on the details more, the finer things of his game. Is that something you noticed as well? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously he played for a, a great college coach and Stacy, and they won a national championship. And, uh, yeah, I just think, you know, it's like if you move up a level from NAI to here or move up to the NBA or wherever you may go in Europe, I mean, your, your game has to keep evolving. And just the, the details of, you know, the because comp the competition is just better every day here in practice, you know. And so uh, he has. His, his, his skill level has gotten better. He, he's, he's shot a good percentage catch and shoot threes. Uh, but, gosh, he's got a great knack of, of just hands on balls. Uh, he'll be at the top of our 13 trap, you know. We haven't really played it at all. Worked on it a bunch in practice. So, uh, but, yeah, he's – uh, his attention to detail has gotten better. I think one of the things that you've said over the offseason when we talk about, you know, improvements going into this season is just pace offensively. Um, just from the beginning of practice from the Bahamas to now, I mean, have you seen that, you know, the improvement that you would like in that specific Yeah, area? you know, possession-wise, you know, we in the Bahamas have averaged over probably 90 possessions, which that's different a little bit, you know. Uh, the other night, I forget, 78 to 8, maybe over 80 possessions in that game. Uh, so, we need to run faster, sprint to the rim better. Our guards got to play with great pace. Now, the only way you can play with pace is you got to get stops and deflections. We didn't cause near enough uh, turnovers in the game uh, uh, Tuesday night. So, no question, though, we're, we're going to – you got to play half-court offense in, in real good games, like the one we'll play Monday night. But, but you do. Pace of play has, has been an emphasis for about four or five months now. Have you thought of Deshaun so far? How much of his – Getting back to 100% is physical. How much of it is kind of trusting the knee mentally and that kind of thing? Yeah, he had a setback uh, Tuesday. And uh, first half, he went up. The kid tried to draw a charge. He landed awkwardly. The MRI was negative, but he has a bone bruise. So he'll be out for Monday, uh, be evaluated week to week on how he's doing. Uh, everything structurally, the ACL, all the ligaments were good, but it is a bone bruise. and. Uh, you know, he came back and played in the second half, started in the second half, and just got up the next morning. I didn't – nobody thought anything of it. Had a lot of stiffness in his, stiffness in his leg. And so, uh, you know, we're just kind of taking it kind of week by week right now. Just back to the recording from Tuesday, I think one of the words that you used, the top egg is stiff or something like that. You know, was that in regard to, you know, what was with his knee? Or yeah, 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 yeah. He – you know, he was limited in, in the Bahamas and uh, – you know, he, he played, and then with about seven or eight minutes, he just had sat over there for a while. I was going to give him a chance to play some in the game, but he uh, he did. And I get it. Sometimes he can sit too long, you know. So uh, he's out there, you know, an hour before practice today working at it. So he's just going to have some days when, when he can be feel really good, some other days not so well. And, uh, you know, so we just kind of go day by day with Ty. What about Deshaun's point, at least initially, how do you – how does that how yeah, do you you minutes? Yeah, you know, Neil, we, we did it in the Bahamas without him. We did it in the Clemson scrimmage because he didn't participate in that. Uh, so Amari Abram, play the point. Matt, play the point. 
T.J. Caldwell will play the point. So, uh, you know, all the three of those guys got a lot of reps in the summer with that, you know. So it's a lot now on, you know, some young guards and then Matt, you know. And it's, I think it's helped Matt, you know. He had played so much of it this summer. I think it's helped him. And so, uh, you know, those are things that we've got to work around for sure. Uh, bench up there. Not that you want to go through this, these injuries and stuff, but maybe in a weird way, blessing these guys, get these other guys, kind of build up that depth and then see what they can do. No. Not really. I mean, we've, we've just done this now for, for a while, you know. So I feel bad for Deshaun. I do. I, I didn't mean that sarcastically. But, we, we, you know, I feel bad for him because he worked like heck, you know, to get back. Was so excited about starting that game, you know. So now he's got a, a setback. Uh, so, uh, but you're right. I mean, the, the thing we have, like I said, we have gone on a foreign trip. We have played a long time without him. Uh, was Deshaun great the other night? No, he was just, you know, it's going to take him a little while to get back. Uh, but it's just good to have him out there. And uh, so, but you're right, uh, great, great chances for, for Amari. And obviously Matt was going to play some there anyway with TJ and even, you know, opens up more for James White, Ty Fagan, Robert Coward. Talk about Malik Ewan's upside, you know, despite you know needing to play harder and all that. What what is that upside with Malik, and you know what what like, what aspect of the upside makes him say, be a potential you know sleeper freshman Malik? Oh player? yeah, I mean he just it's just it, it's his upside is here. I mean he got it to where his energy level was about here in June when he got here, and it's about right there, and it's gotten a lot better. But to do it every single day, y'all saw glimpses of him when you put him in. You know he just dunk a quick ball. The move he made on the baseline, his skill level, you know, and then missed a layup. Uh, he's big, got great hands, the one inside-out pass, an open three to TJ. So he's got all the tools. He just, like I said, it's just it's competition at that spot and figure out just every day in practice. He's a good guy, you know, takes coaching, but he's just his, his level of, you know, being able to go at a faster pace has just got to get there. Seen out of Theo since he got here, and kind of what are your expectations for him in this year? Yeah, just an unbelievable guy that wants to be coached. I mean, it's just amazing. And, uh, you know, just uh, try to work on his lower body strength. He's got a great knack for blocking shots. You know, had four the other night. Hope that will continue when the competition gets better. Uh, can really score to, for, for a right-handed player. Has a great left hand in the post. You know, left hand, right hand jump hook. And uh, just – He's got great length, you know. So he's done really well in the minutes that we've played him. His stats equate like if you doubled him to, to 28, 32, 33 minutes, it'd be really good minutes. So yeah, he's he is. He's just a, a great, great guy to coach every day. Talking to Javius too today, and one of the things I talked about was you know some of his you know best plays on his highlight reel was you know against you know teams that were really above track sure. competition and all that. What does that go to say about Javius just not taking gains for granted, you know, no matter who it's against? Yeah, I mean it, that's that's what caught my eye. I mean, obviously, we played against him during the COVID year and uh, when he was at Jackson State. And he had some, like, spectacular plays. Maybe he had 12, and I forgot how many rebounds. But I turn on the tape against Illinois, you know, double-double, or turn on the tape, Louisiana Tech, you know, Kenny Lofton, who's now with the Grizzlies. And he had 21 and 10 or 11. I mean, just played really good. So you're right about that. And you saw some of those plays, you know, in, what, 14 or 15 minutes the other night. So very athletic, good guy. You know, and uh, so, you know, he's got to get where he can play the four and the five and be able to go out on the perimeter and defend. Any further questions for Coach? I guess one last thing, I guess when you look at Alcorn State right now, I mean, just what kind of sticks out, you know, about them and where do you feel like, you know, that it's something they do that y'all that really need to improve on? Because you said that there's a lot of things they need to improve on. Yeah, you know, we – we, we said about three years ago, we played Jackson State, Mississippi Valley, and Alcorn. I mean, Alcorn's defending SWAC champions. Got upset in the championship game. Uh, went to Texas A&M, who was playing as good as anybody in college basketball at that time. First round of the NIT, game was tied at half. A&M beats them 12. They've got a lot of really good players back on that team. Uh, I think their coach does an outstanding job. Uh, they guard well, run good offense. So we're going to play really, really well. We understand Alcorn State's going to come in here, and that's a, as big a game as they'll have on their schedule all year long. And so uh, we're going to have to really, really have two or three great days of preparation. Thanks, Coach. Right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.